my, didn't we do a show together in New York? You were like an amazing actor. What's wrong with you? You look homeless. Well, don't you have parents in Brooklyn? Well, come on. Why don't you call? Come with me to my hotel, and you can call back. You can call your father. My father took me back, and and he said, "Now you can't drink. You can't drink that alcohol. You can't drink alcohol. You can drink beer, but you got to get a job." Lehman Brothers. My God, now we're talking about it. You could be a broker. My, now maybe you could be a son that I could be proud of. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. My son drinks every single day. And do you know that he pees in the bed? And I have to change his mattress every single day, and his brother, George, has to take lit cigarettes off his chest. I am so worried about him. I am so worried about him. I don't want him to die. My son pees in beer cans. My son pees in beer cans. And he still wets the bed, and my wife has to clean up after him every day. Do you know he drinks 12 six-packs of the pints every single day? I don't know what to help do. I don't know how to help him. I don't want him to die. My wife and I are flying to Kodiak, Alaska to visit my other son, and Richie is going to Wildwood, New Jersey to stop drinking. Strange. I don't know if he's going to be alive when we get back. Now, oh my God, there we is. I work at Lehman Brothers with this fat guy, Rich or Richie. I mean, he is like this amazing broker. And you know, this weekend, my girlfriend Laura and I went to New Jersey to the Atlantic Shore, and Richie was on the bus coming home. He was red like a lobster. He must have laid in the sun for hours. I think he's crazy. Now he thinks that we followed him to Wildwood, New Jersey, and he's totally paranoid. Now, that weekend, after the 4th of July, I went to work that Monday, and I sat in my office, and I stared, I stared at the computer terminal, and just stared, and they finally told me to go home. And I went home, and, um, and I left the front door open, and my, and my brother George came home, who was a New York City police officer. Richie, he didn't shoot me. At that point, I was 150 pounds. I was 260 pounds. I had alcoholic neuropathy, meaning that I could not walk. My waist was 50 inches. My skin was red and blotchy. I looked like I was 50 years old. I was 27. And I'm in here for two weeks since my brother took me here, St. Vincent's Hospital on the corner, the corner of 12th Street and 6th Avenue. 
and I'm in the fifth floor in the psych ward. Oh my God, there's that lady. Every day she dresses, she puts a trench coat on, and she walks to the front desk with her suitcase, and she thinks that she's getting out. I know what's gonna happen. She's gonna stand there for an hour, and then they're gonna come and she's gonna scream. But you know that I think that, that I think that I'm gonna be like her. They're never gonna let me out. You know I'm on very heavy medication and I can't even think straight. Richie, get out for work. What? Oh. You know what they told me in the hospital? They said that they said that I wasn't crazy, that I was an alcoholic. And do you know that I went, I went uh, two months without drinking, but it's six months later and I'm still drinking now, maybe much as before. Richie! Richie, get up for work! Oh, God. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. The doctor said, if I don't stop drinking, I'm gonna die. I'm 260 pounds, and I pee in beer cans. Mom, I'm not going to work today. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop drinking. I, I don't know what happened. All I know is I felt this connection. I felt at that moment that God wanted me to stop drinking. So I had my last drink, February 22nd, 1983. I felt that he wanted me to have a new life. And despite the fact that six months later my, I was diagnosed with HIV, and a year later my father died, I still haven't drank, and I haven't had a drink in almost 27 years. Thank you.